Hey guys, this is Jaybird from UGX Mods, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to create purchase loops in Black Ops 3. So this is a scripting tutorial, and it's going to show you how to make a loop that will per allow players to purchase something, uh, such as a trap, and do it multiple times, as well as checking if they have enough points and minusing those points from the player. So this is quite handy for a lot of things you can create traps, you can create perks, you can create uh, wall buys, many functions to this, and it can be applied in lots of scripts, so it's quite a useful one to have at the beginning here. Um, so right now I got really not much code here, but the basic format for this is going to be, I'm going to have my initial function here, and this is something new to Black Ops 3, they have this new function keyword before all their functions now, so if you're uh, if you're doing scripting from World at War and you're bringing it over to Black Ops 3, this is something you got to keep in mind of now to add this function keyword before your actual function. So let's say I have another uh, script calling this script. It's calling initial. The first thing that I'm going to want to have set up is if I'm doing a purchase loop, I need to have some sort of trigger. So in Radiant, let's say I have a trigger and I want to get that trigger and let's call it test trigger. So right now, what I just did was I have a variable called trigger and it's getting an entity from radiant. And that entity is, let's say a trigger use and it's got a target name of test trigger. So it's gonna get that and store that into the variable trigger. The thing is, I can do this with multiple things. I can do it with script models, I can do it with um, script origins, script structs, uh, all types of triggers, but in this case we're going to talk about trigger use because that's just what's going to be used to set up for uh, a purchase loop because we want the player to go up to it and press and hold the use key and then that would be what activates it. So we have the trigger. The next thing we're going to want to do is call this watch trigger function. Uh, so basically we can do this in basically two ways. So we have our trigger and we want it to call watch trigger. The thing is, since I'm just calling watch trigger, it's not threaded. So nothing below this, this code down here, isn't called until watch trigger is done. So it's got to perform everything that's in this function before it can get to this code. Because that's just the way it's in, like, it's an order of the way it's called. It's a queue format. Um, the thing is, we can get around that. Say you wanted to have something down here, you can thread this function and have it so that the code below here will play at the same time as this one. So it gets this gets threaded, and it allows the uh, code to continue on as well as start doing this function. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to have any other code going past this. For now, since we don't have any code down there, and I don't plan on adding any code after this, I'm just going to not thread it for optimization purposes, because it does require more CPU usage when you start threading a whole bunch more. And I'm sure there's some sort of limit in Black Ops 3 to how many uh, functions you can actually have threaded. So, back on to uh, Watch Trigger. Uh, Let's start off by actually getting our loop going. So we'll have a while loop, and inside the parameters for the while loop, we basically have an argument that determines how long it's going to uh, be looping through this while loop for. In our case, we want it to continue forever. Uh, so we would want 1, because it's a Boolean value. It's true or false, 1 or 0. So I could put a variable in here like count and have that increment and do like count is less than five and have a counter going and it can only do it five times and I keep incrementing the counter. But in this case, for a purchase loop in this case, we want to have it always looping through. Um, inside of our while loop though, we're going to have a, a section for waiting for the trigger to be activated. So the thing is, I can't use the variable trigger here. And the reason why is it was a local variable in initial. So if I go into watch trigger, 
trigger isn't defined anymore. It was it was defined in initial, but watch trigger doesn't know what trigger is, even though we're calling this on trigger. What it's done is it done it made a reference to it, and now the reference variable self is trigger. So if I call if I use the variable self in watch trigger, it acts as trigger because it's referring to the trigger uh, as the reference variable. It's very similar to the this variable, the this reference in C++ and other programming uh, languages. Uh, it's just basically making a reference to this and now we can actually use self as the variable. So say I want to wait till the player activates the trigger. So we want to wait till trigger, we want to wait for trigger to uh, the trigger to be triggered by a player or any entity really and so this will wait till trigger and then this code below it it won't be activated until this wait till is done so it's waiting until the trigger has been active so if we want something to let's say check if the player specifically had enough points to activate this trigger, we'd want to know who activated the trigger. So the nice thing about the wait till function is similar to World of War and other Call of Duties. Uh, there is a second parameter that you can define yourself. I could call this, uh, I could call this entity. I could call it player. In this case, I'm going to call it player. Whatever you want to call it, it's just the name of a variable. We just care about what's stored in it. So in this case, player it's going to be whatever activated this trigger. So assuming that it was the player who activated it, we want to now check if they have enough score to purchase whatever we're doing. Say it's a trap. So we'll do an if statement. And in an if statement, you basically have code that is only activated if the, par if the parameters here are met. So we want to check if the player score, this is a variable under player, player.score, we want to know if it's greater than or equal to, uh, let's create a level dot trap cost. And so the thing is, we don't have this level dot trap cost yet. So we can actually define it up here before this function gets called, because it needs to know what it is before that gets called. So if I define it up here, level dot trap cost equals 1000, you might be thinking, well, if trigger was defined up here, and it's not, uh, how, do, how does it know uh, if it's self down here? The thing is, I called it level dot trap cost. If I just called it trap cost, watch trigger doesn't know what trap cost is. Although it knows what level is. All functions know what level is. So if I create this variable under level, so level dot trap cost, this ver function does know what level is, so I can still use level dot trap cost, but I wouldn't be able to use it if they were both set to trap cost. Trap cost is not defined in here. It's not. It's defined in here, but it can only be used in this one. But since it, this is a level variable, it can be used in this function because it knows what level is. So if I were to check if the player score is greater than or equal to trap cost, which is set at a thousand then this code will activate if the player score is greater than that, uh, that number. If it doesn't, it'll just skip over this. And the nice thing about our while loop is it will come back around and it'll wait for the trigger again. So then we can check to see if the player hits the trigger a second time and if they have enough score, then it will activate it. So the thing is, we can do a, a few things here. If, it do, if they do have the score, what we want to do is actually break out of this while loop. We're going to end up having two while loops for this purchase loop, just the way that the logic works for this. And I'll explain in a second. But basically, we want it to break out of the purchase loop so that it can activate the trap or wall buy or whatever code that you want to implement on your own. Uh, this is just a base tutorial on the loop itself. Uh, so we want to break out of this. And this is a keyword break that will break out of the most immediate while loop, which is this one, or loop in general, could be a for loop, um, could be a do while, but in this case it's a while loop, and this one specifically.
So what ends up happening is if the player's score is greater than the trap cost, it's going to break out of this while loop, and then the code down here gets active. But if they don't have enough score, this if statement isn't actually called, like the stuff inside of it isn't called, uh, then it's going to loop back around and check if the, uh, the trigger is actually active again. So we can do all of our code for our trap down here, but then uh, what we want to do first is we want to minus the score from the player because that's the whole point of this cost thing. We don't want to just check if they have enough points. We want to minus it like they're actually purchasing the trap. It's something that, uh, like, so that you, you don't just have enough points. You want to actually minus the points from their score. Like, you could do something like, oh, player.score minus equals 1,000 or equals player score dot 1,000. But the, the, the thing is, uh, we don't get that to pop up on screen. There's no HUD in the game. Like, you know, when you purchase something, you want it to say minus 1,000 right beside the player score, and you want to see it actually change there. So we, we actually have some functions from Treyarch, uh, and the thing is, it's in another script. So if we want to call that function, the minus to player score function, we're going to have to include that script into our script here and tell it how to use it. Like We, we want to tell it where the directory is to it, and we want to be able to use it. So to do that, we need to, at the top of our script, you, uh, put using script and then zm, so this is, the f this is the directory to the script, underscore zm score. So now our script knows the directory to this zm score GSC, but we want to have uh, the function. The thing is, if we're calling this function, even though we have the directory, we still need to name the script that it's coming from any time that we call this function, because it's going to look to the immediate functions in our script first before it looks for ones in other scripts. So we have our player variable, so we know the player that we want to minus the score from, so we're going to call this function on the player, so it's we need to name the script first, so it's zm underscore score, and to call a function from that we need to go colon colon, so it knows that we're calling a function, and then it it knows that we're calling a function from zm score, and then we need to name the actual function, which would be uh, minus to player score. And then we have uh, one parameter that we can put in here, which is the cost of, or the, the score that we want to have minus from the player. So what I'm going to do is just put our level dot trap cost here. So then what ends up happening is if they have enough score, then it's going to minus from their score the amount that we have set up, which is good because then now it won't just take the points away and you don't have any visual representation of that happening. It will now, in game, have a minus 1000 in red right beside the score, like right, bef right beside the player's score, so that you can see that it was actually minus from them and you'll see the points go down. So that's now set up. We now have a while loop checking for the trigger, checking for the player's score to be greater than our defined score, and then minusing the score from that. And we can actually do a couple extra things here. We can do something like uh, play a sound on that trigger. So play sound, uh, play sound, not player sound. Something like, I think it was cha-ching or something like that. Uh, you can use your own sounds. I don't know if this is an actual sound in Black Ops 3. It was something like this in, in World at War. Um, another thing we can do is if they don't have enough score, we can do else and then do like a deny sound. So, self is the trigger, so it's going to play the cha-ching sound on the trigger, it's going to play the deny sound on the trigger, so if we have enough score, it'll minus the score from the player, it'll also play the cha-ching, like they purchased something, on the trigger, and then break out and do the code, or if they don't have enough score, it's just going to play the deny sound, and then loop back up to the top. The issue we have here is say, and I mentioned this earlier, we wanted to have two while loops. And the reason being is if I break out of this while loop and then I start performing my code for my trap or whatever, but I 
want to have this happen multiple times, like this is great if you only want it one time purchase, but say it's a trap, like my flogger. I want the flogger to have a cooldown, and then when it's done, it'll loop back up and allow the player to purchase it again. But our code right now is only set up for one time use. So we need to have a second while loop that will hold everything. It will hold all the code that we just held, uh, wrote here. It will allow us to loop back through every bit of purchase code that we just created so that it can do it multiple times. And what we're going to have here is even our code for, say this is our flogger code here. I just wrote this here as a comment for now, but it's just like you write your own code uh, for whatever you're trying to do and implement. But we'll have this second while loop enclosed, enclosing everything, including that code, so that it'll come through, do our purchase loop inside of here. It'll break out of it, but it'll still be in this first while loop execute this code, then we'll have some sort of wait. Remember, every while loop needs to have some sort of wait. It has to have a wait till or some sort of wait or else you'll get uh, an infinite loop error. So make sure that you have, in this case, we had wait till, so we're okay for this while loop. But for this one, we have to have some sort of wait and we can use it for our cooldown actually. So wait 30, say our cooldown is 30. It'll break out of this, perform all of our code for our trap for say, let's say, and then it'll do wait 30 seconds, because this is in seconds, and it'll loop back up, and then they can purchase it again. So there we go, that basically sets up our two loops, and let's run through everything actually. Uh, we have our script up here that we're including, ZM score, so that our script knows where the directory to that script is. We have our function initial, which is going to be our first function that's getting called from another script. Let's say our map name script is calling this. And then we get our trigger, our test trigger, which has the KVP's uh, target name test trigger in Radiant. Then we use level.trapcost as our variable for the score. And it's a level variable, so we can access it in uh, watch trigger. Then on our watch trigger variable, we're going to call watch trigger it doesn't need to be threaded because we don't have anything down here that's going to be called uh, and we have our function watch trigger with our two while loops one is in uh, enclosed all of our code here so that it'll constantly loop through the second one is just for the purchasing and it's going to wait until the trigger to find the variable player as the person who actually activated the trigger we're going to check if the player score is greater than or equal to the trap cost we are then going to use this player variable, call our uh, script that we had the directory to, and minus the player score with our trap cost variable. And then we're going to play a sound on the trigger, break out of the loop, which will loop back through after 30 seconds and play our code before that. Or we'll have it so that the player uh, didn't have enough score and it just plays a deny sound and loops back up to the front here. So that covers everything for the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out UGX for some more tutorials in the future.